Our models of planetary formation around stars are still incomplete at best, but astronomers using the James Webb Space Telescope have gained new insights into how the planet WASP-121b formed around its star. WASP-121b is a bit of a hellscape, a giant planet about the mass of Jupiter that orbits its star at a distance of just 4 million kilometers in 1.25 days. The side of the planet facing the star is at a toasty 3,000 Kelvin, or almost 5,000 Fahrenheit, while the night side is at a cooler but still melting 1,500K. The day side temperature is high enough that elements such as iron, magnesium, and silicon could exist as gases and theoretically be detectable using spectroscopy. Unfortunately, the observations would need to be done in the UV, as that's where the strongest spectral lines are. To avoid that, the researchers used JWST to measure the atmospheric amounts of water, carbon monoxide, and silicon monoxide on the day side of the planet, and methane on the night side. By using well-studied key ratios like the one between carbon to oxygen for Jupiter-like planets, the astronomers can estimate the amount of heavier elements present in the planet when it formed. The results published in the journal Nature Astronomy show that WASP-121b likely accumulated most of its gas in a region where water was frozen but methane existed as a gas. In our solar system, this would correspond to the region somewhere between Uranus and Jupiter. The planet would also have accreted most of its heavier elements from pebble and rock-sized materials during this phase. Gravitational interactions with other bodies in the fledgling solar system would then have caused WASP-121b to spiral in close to its star. A second group of researchers have built 3D atmospheric models of the planet to explain the differences in composition between the day side and the night side of the planet, and those results are published in the Astronomical Journal. I've just scratched the surface of this research here, and there's much more to learn. You can find a great article over at fizz.org, and there's a link to both papers in the description. That's today's video. I will see you back here tomorrow.